Murray Kessler, Chief Executive of Lorillard Tobacco Company. Um, Lorillard is one of the oldest companies, let alone tobacco companies, in America, having just celebrated its 250th anniversary. I believe we are, if not the oldest, the second oldest company currently traded on the New York Stock Exchange. So a company with a, a lot of tradition and, and history and um, the marketer of Newport Cigarettes, the number two cigarette brand in the United States, and now the proud marketer of Blue East Cigs. Congratulations. Um, can you just give us a quick uh, rundown of what the purchase was um, and why Blue Cigs as opposed to other companies? Well, sure. I mean, we, we went um, through a pretty thorough analysis. Um, it started from, um, from the day I joined Lorillard. I have a pretty strong history of being involved in harm reduction. I ran UST. I was chief executive officer and chairman of the board there. And a lot of the discussions that you heard today at, at TMA, um, um, I, I think I was one of the first to bring those discussions to the United States and the notion of the, the Swedish experience and, um, and the roles that other tobacco products could be used to, um, to help reduce overall harm from cigarettes. Um, and I made a living of that for, for a decade. So when I joined Lorillard about two years ago, Altria bought, bought UST and I elected not to, to stay on with them and joined Lorillard and everybody expected me to get into the smokeless tobacco business. Um, I studied the business and given where we were and, and the, uh, the sort of the, that the big smokeless companies had bought and what was going on in the external environment, to me, it seemed like the opportunity that was a, there was a brand new emerging segment um, that was experiencing rapid growth and um, was bringing technology to the tobacco industry. So it caught my interest. And then I started talking to numerous wholesalers and I had a, I remember having a wholesale advisory panel in. And this is about a year and a half ago and they're all sitting around the table, said, you know, they know me well and said, Murray, you better be paying attention to this. It's, it's, you know, it's been around for a few years but it's starting to sell and then I heard the same thing from retailers saying, you know, the exact same thing. This thing is really starting to catch on. So um, I, th I thought that this might be an avenue for Lorillard to get into the smokeless business um, in a Lorillard way instead of sort of duplicating what everybody else had done. It'd be first. And um, so we, we hired an outside consulting firm and started studying, fielded a lot of proprietary research, did it over extended period of time, so we actually fielded multiple research studies, and it was amazing to see consumer perceptions and how they had changed in a couple years, and um, how the acceptance had grown dramatically. Um, and I think that um, corresponds with how the technology's been improving pretty exponentially here over the, the last couple years. Um, so I sort of got more excited and more excited about it, and then we did a lot of proprietary research on the brands and studying the market, and did consumer studies, and Far and away, Blue E-Cigs came out as the brand with um, the highest net promoter scores. And I don't know if you're familiar with net promoter scores. It's a measure of brand equity. And it, it, it asks consumers, um, would you be likely to recommend this brand to a friend? And if you, so a 1 to 10 scale, and if you are a 9 or a 10, you're considered a promoter. And if you're a 7 or an 8, you're considered neutral. And if you're 1 through 6, you're seen as a detractor and you take the promoters, subtract out the detractors, and you get a net promoter score. And the net promoter scores for Blue um, rivaled some of the best cigarette brands, and it's you know relatively new brand. So that, that was pretty exciting. Um, did blind product testing, um, um, evaluated the marketing, e et cetera. Um, then we got dug into it further as we met Jason and started to open up the dialogue, and I even got more excited as I sort of learned all the quality controls that Jason had into place to um, sort of take a lead if, in, on pending regulation. So we, we got all that information and um, had to make a decision whether now was the appropriate time or not, because I believe as chairman and CEO of Lorillard that this is going to be a very big category. Um, I, I don't think you've seen anything yet, uh, and I think it's, it's going to get quite large. And so then it was a question of do you sit back and watch it a little bit and what is the negative drawback of a tobacco company getting into e-cigs versus the benefits? You know, that there are, the negatives are obvious that some consumers would be concerned that um, we would do the opposite of what we'll actually do, that we would buy it and maybe slow it down or shut it down because we want to protect our business. But 
um, you would have to not know me and not know the company very well to, 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 to think that. Or you could think the opposite, which is there are many great e-cigarette companies and they're, it's a very fragmented industry and there's some fly-by-night e-cigarette companies and regulation is coming and we have a lot of regulatory expertise and if somebody large didn't step in, maybe this great category wouldn't get a fair chance because um, mistakes would be made with battery management, mistakes would be made on not controlling um, the manufacturing process well and liquids and that rules would be written to the worst in the industry and, and then stunt the growth of it. So we decided that we could get in, that our relationship with, with the FDA and um, our experience with retailers, et cetera, that we could help this category reach its full potential. Okay. Uh, do you anticipate any plans to change the product as it stands now? Not to change the product, because I think that um, Jason and the Blue team have done a, a great job with the product. I would say there's um, opportunities to put more quality controls over the product, right? So I think over time, I think it's very important the lead that Jason took to make the product in the U.S. I'd like to see that fully automated in, in the U.S. You know, so right now we, you know, parts of it are made here and then shipped to China and then shipped back again. And, and I want to make sure that every cigarette that a consumer gets knows that the liquid was, was made, that it's been pr tracked perfectly through the process and that they're guaranteed time and time again um, that the amount of nicotine that's supposed to be in there is in there, that the liquid that's in there is in there, that they can trust the, you know, that, that when they smoke this, that a battery is not going to blow up and all, all of those things. So um, I want to make sure all that kind of quality is put into place and that I could look to the FDA and say, you want to see how it's made? Come on in. Um, we have nothing to hide. Here it is. Here, here's all the test results. And, um, and in, that was in our consumer testing as well. There was a a huge increase by, in consumer trust and credibility if they knew the liquid was, was made here in the U.S. And, um, and that there were controls around it. So I think that's another area that our size and investment can help. And it's, all, it's not been very long since you purchased Blue Six, but um, what's been the response from the ESIG community? And I mean, do you have any kind of statement to them or response to them? I think day one, it, and it's natural, there were a, a number of people who were concerned like, uh-oh, what, what are they going to do? Are they going to change the product? Are they going to try to shut down the growth of this? And that, but that lasted only about 24 hours. And I think Jason and his marketing team quickly responded to all of that. And, and then I think it settled in, in very quickly. So I think they're, you know, what, what consumers are going to see is increased availability. Today, you know, it, it, it's hard. You can only get it in a few outlets. You can get it in Walgreens. You can get it in Sheets. Six months from now, you're going to be able to get it at most major retailers in the U.S. Um, we've put a lot of investment already around Blue. So, um, you know, you, you won't have to walk into one store and buy one product and another store and buy another. If you, you're a Blue consumer, you'll, you'll be able to go to your you know, favorite retailer and be able to buy it or continue to buy it online. And, um, and you'll see um, at a more rapid pace some of the technology that um, the Blue eSigs team has been working on come to market even quicker and advancements in technology and social media and, and all the, those aspects of it. So, I mean, we, we've hit the ground running and made some significant investments. And I'd want Blue eSig consumers to know that um, we're 100 percent behind the success of this company and we're going to do nothing to slow it down. Quite the, the contrary. I, this is a high tech cigarette and it's it's the wave of the future um, there's been a lot of talk about you know what the FDA is doing the the uh, regulation hammer is going to kind of come down probably in the next year at some point uh, what are your plans uh, you know jumping into this you know you clearly would have had a sense as to what was going to happen in regulation but what what are you hoping to do with the FDA are you just hoping to comply or are you hoping to you know, have a role in shaping what that right. regulation looks like. I think with the, the, the FDA, I'm more optimistic. I, I think we will have a role. Um, I've already contacted them. They've already agreed to meet with us to sit down to talk about sort of consumer perception, share some of the research, talk about um, um, the science that's been done so far. I, I think federal regulation will come, but it'll come at a moderate pace. I'm actually a little bit more worried right now at knee-jerk state regulation. I'm worried about um, states putting bans on 
and not even knowing why. Just because I think e-cigarettes make people, especially folks in the public health community, I think it makes them nervous when they see in a room somebody smoking an e-cigarette and they, you know, they, they rush to try to put smoking restrictions on there without getting the facts. So um, at a state level, we have a lot of education to do and, and just say, let the federal regulation run its course. Let people study what needs to. Don't, don't put in regulation that'll um, stunt the growth of something that can be terrific for, for many reasons. I mean, we, we don't make health claims, and we won't do that. You heard some of the dialogue today at TMA on going through a modified risk process. We have to find out what that means for e-cigarettes, right? Because most of the e-cigarette people aren't making claims. They're just saying what the product doesn't have. They just say it has no tobacco smoke um, and claims like that. They also talk about odor, convenience, being able to use it anywhere. And um, so a anyway, there's, there's a fair amount of education that, that needs to happen because ultimately if you, sh you, you, you shut it down, what you're saying, and you know, you've heard some leading harm reductionists today talk about that, what you're doing is forcing somebody back to sort of the, the most harmful product on the continuum of risk. And, um, we just want this product to get a fair shake because I, you know, consumers enjoy it, and it's a natural. You know, I, like again, I used to run a smokeless tobacco company. There's real sound epidemiology on the relative risk of smokeless versus cigarettes, right? Years and years of, of those studies, but that's difficult behavior. That, I mean, that's, that's hard to get a, let, let me take a woman, to get a woman who is a smoker who may even hear about and see the benefits, even if they're just convenience benefits, of a can of skull, it's just hard to picture a woman taking a big pinch of skull and walking around spitting. She's not going to do that today. And and even snooze, you know, it's you know, you put it in a pouch in your mouth and it feels uncomfortable, and they're concerned. Can you see the pouch? Can't you see that? I've done all the research over over the years. Now compare that to e-cigarettes. E-cigarettes, it's very comfortable. It's what I do. I know I'm not smoking. I think it's even clever that blue goes a step further, doesn't make it look like a cigarette. Right, it's a black product with a blue tip. Um, I think that's even smarter, though, that you know anybody around you looks at it and says, "Well, what is that? It's it's clearly not a cigarette." Uh, and um, but it's behavior. It's hand to mouth. It's I, I get to inhale vapor and blow it out, and I'm comfortable, and it's it's familiar, and I want to do. Um, and then I think you know ultimately, consumers enjoy nicotine and tobacco products for for pleasure. That they don't do it for health. People aren't going to walk around and smoke e-cigarettes on health claims. They need reassurance from the public health community. They need reassurance from their doctor. They don't look to the company. What, what we need to do is make this an enjoyable product that, that is hip and trendy and, and, that, and therefore consumers will want us to vape these products or smoke these products instead of of cigarettes and get them widely accepted and relevant. So um, that'll be the plan. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, one last question. If there was one thing you had to pick out that you really think you're most excited about in the e-cig world, you know, whether it's um, you know celebrities using them or a new product or a new toy that you think uh, you guys might play with, uh, what would that one thing be? When I met with um, the president, Jason Healy, the thing that he said that put me over the edge is I said, you know, okay, you've done this great job developing the product. How, how if, if you had to design your perfect e-cigarette, where do you think the industry is? Where do you think blue is against that perfect cigarette? And he said, I think we're about 15% of the way there. And that's the thing that excited me the most. That, that, that And I've talked to now his designers and, and everyone else, and all of them believe that this thing is just going to get better and better and better and that the technology will be looking at it. So there'll be toys and other kinds of things and social media and all, all that. But what's really exciting is the performance of this over the next few years, I think, will be like any other technology, whether it's a digital camera or anything else, that it'll get better and better, more affordable, more affordable, and, and that's when you'll really see the category take off.